Okay, so this video is a bit of a follow-up to my previous two videos on gyroscopic navigation and um, and all of that. Um, I had a couple of points I wanted to add. The first one based on a comment that I just got, um, which just really blew me away. Um, it was so simple and yet it's... However, it seems you could also prove this by never leaving home, unless there's something I'm not understanding. If you were to just set the gyro in a gimbal base where it could move freely and then put it in motion with, the, with its axis in a vertical position, in the next six hours wouldn't you see the axis slowly move to a horizontal position at the as the base rotates with the globe Earth? If it doesn't, then the Earth is not a spinning ball. Okay, so after taking a few seconds to let what he's saying absorb, uh, I was like, holy cow, I think, <laughs> I think he's right. And that's pretty insane, because they don't ever talk about that, and you would think they would. I mean, right there in the film, he's saying that the gyroscope resists the pull of Earth. It does not stay in alignment with with gravity or with the surface of the Earth, right? So that's when it goes into all the uh, explanation of how the magnetic compass supposedly is what corrects it. and That's a whole other thing, but I'm, I'll get into that in a minute. But it's totally true that if, if the gyroscope on the gimbal, when it's spun up fast enough, is going to resist the resist the gravity of the earth you know when a any kind of vehicle is moving around the ball well then the same thing is going to be apply just being in place on the surface of the earth and the surface and then the surface moves and like you said six hours that's a quarter of the the rotation day that would give you a 90 degree difference it should be pretty simple to simple thing to prove now of course n none of the um, y you don't hear any of the Navy guys talking about this and the crazy part is is that in a nutshell I think this what I think it means is that really a, the only way a gyroscopic navigation system could work is on a flat earth I mean, period. Because when you think about what they are saying, what are are explaining about how the thing works, and that it it does not stay aligned with with the surface of the Earth, right? It always has to be. They're they're talking about how it needs to be adjusted when you know a gyroscope is in a vehicle that moves around the Earth, but at the same time, the Earth is constantly moving, so. That's going to be throwing you out of alignment from the, you know, the true up and down as well. Um, so how is a magnetic compass going to know how to, or anything else for that matter, to know how to uh, adjust the gyroscope in relation to the Earth, um, accounting for both the motion, the you know, the movement of the vehicle, whether it's a plane or a sub or a ship or whatever, and the motion of the surface of the Earth around the center of the Earth, right? Which is supposedly where gravity is pulling every, everything down towards, right? So you've got two, you know, two constantly changing factors um, all the time, or well, at least one, because, you know, even if a gyroscope is sitting still, it's still moving on the surface of the Earth. But w there's nothing to really... I mean, so the navigation system needs a navigation system? I mean, it's it's completely, it's absurd. And then, when you think take it a step further, I mean, obviously, according to the Copernican model, um, you know, the Earth is not the only thing that's moving. So, if rigidity in space, this this principle of rigidity in space, tells us that, you know, the, the gyroscope will resist. I mean, that clip says it will resist all forces put upon it, right? So gravity. And this bears out too because um, we know that when they use gyroscopes in jet planes, right? That so they always know which way is up is down, and they're doing all these, uh, you know, dogfighting maneuvers and barrel rolls and 
subjecting the pilot and the plane to, uh, you know, lots of G-forces. So if you're doing dogfighting maneuvers in, in a fighter jet, let's say, and you've got your gyroscope on its gimbals in there, so the pilot always knows which way is up and down and doesn't have to, you know, look out his window. That means the gyroscope is resisting several Gs of force. So if a gyroscope can, can function in that kind of an, uh, an application, right, going hundreds of miles an hour, moving at crazy speeds and having to constantly stay level and resist that many G-forces on it, then... What if it can resist that strong of, uh, of gravitational forces? Then it can. It's resisting all of them, right? Um, so not just the Earth's gravitation, but any of the other you know gravities that are lesser than the Earth's that are supposedly um, functioning throughout the solar system. So I mean, there's lots. Of, my point is that there's lots of there's lots of motions that are supposedly happening in a Copernican model, not just the Earth's rotation, but. Um, the Earth orbiting around the Sun, the solar system rotating around the galaxy, the galaxy rotating around, you know, the universe, and so on. So, hypothetically, you would think that um, <laughs> the, uh, a, a truly um, precision-functioning, you know, military-industrial-grade gyroscope would be holding its fixed position, its rigidity in space, against all of those motions. So... If you fired up a gyroscope, shouldn't you just see it doing all kinds of crazy things? I mean, shouldn't it just be moved, not just moving 90 degrees over six hours, but it could be doing all kinds of motions because of all the different orbital things that are supposedly happening. But no, we just, it stays in place, right? Um, we're, and we're talking here, of course, we're talking about the kinds of gyroscopic navigation systems that they use you know, submarines and, and ships and things. You know, these, we're not talking about toy gyroscopes, just for the record. But the other thing I was thinking, too, was just back on that video with the uh, the gyroscope and supposedly being corrected by the, the magnetic compass in that 1960 Navy training video. Uh, the more I've thought about that, the more absurd that is for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, because... You know, a gyroscope is designed to um, maintain orientation in terms of, you know, several axes, and yet simply, simply relying on a magnetic compass to tell you where north is, well, that's going to tell you, that's only at the most going to give you, you know, orientation for, for one axis, right? And the more, and depending on where you are on the globe, uh, you know, north is always going to be in one direction, but you're, it's going to, ch it won't tell you like where the plane, where the, where the plane should be depending on where you are on the globe, because, you know, obviously if you're up in Alaska, you, you know, it's going to be different than if you were down in, you know, South America or something. Um, you know, magnetic compass doesn't, doesn't point you directly at where the magnetic north is or the north pole is. It only gives you a, you know, it's basically a two-dimensional device, um, so which is kind of worthless for for supposedly re re uh, calibrating a, a gyroscope. Um, not to mention, in this other video, it actually explains how you have several issues with magnetic compasses themselves in terms of um, magnetic variation and, and deviation, I believe. And anybody who's ever used a map and compass, like when they're out hiking. Um, understands that you know magnetic north is not just this this clean easy thing that is the same wherever you are depending on where you are in the country or the world mag magnetic north is always warped so you always have to adjust for that in your calculations um, when using a compass right you always have to delineate um, you know depending on where you are like for the magnetic north now how is a magnetic compass that is supposedly in a plane hooked up to a gyroscope, going to know exactly where it is in the world to account for the amount of magnetic uh, declination. That's the word, declination. To account for the correct amount of declination, to know where true north is, to then be able to reorient the gyroscope, all in split-second timing. Um, it's just It just gets ridiculous. So, 
I think the bottom line is that, uh, yeah, gyroscopes, the only way that they could be of any use is on a, a completely flat plane where up is always up and, you know, sideways is always sideways and down is always down. And other, otherwise it just, it, it contradicts itself. The explanations they give for gyroscopes and how they function contradicts their own model. So there you go. Thank you.